This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. So just a little bit of a note for those of you who have been checking out the Stock Twits rooms. That's where I have a premium room over there. Zach's Earnings Insights is the name. So they just started a free trial over there. So that's cool. It's only three days. I don't know. I'm going to talk to them about it, see if I can get it extended to like a six or seven day free trial because that would be more interesting, um, especially depending on when you sign up. If you sign up on like a Friday, not much is going to be going on over the weekends because I mainly post during the weekdays over there. So um, sign up during a weekday, but you can get a three day free trial now of the Stock Twits rooms and it's on Stock Twits. Just click on the little rooms button and go to Zach's Earnings Insights. That's my room. I'm talking about all the earnings over there how the Zacks rank works, interesting things I'm just seeing out there on the market, uh, conference calls, The I'm live tweeting some of those, depending on which one is going on and if I find them interesting. So people asking questions, all this stuff is going on over there. So go check that out now that we have the free trial. Like I said, it's just the three days right now, but um, I'm going to try to see if I can get them to extend it. But for now, at least you can get in there for three days to, to check it out. So please do that. And um, let's get on with this episode. So many times on this podcast, I talk about what it takes to be a value investor. If it was so easy, everyone would be one, right? Why wouldn't you be? Heck, there would be multiple Warren Buffetts out there, not just one. (laughs) Um, Obviously, there's some other very well-known value investors in addition to Warren Buffett. Um, Don't want to leave them out. But there would be a lot more uh, greatness in the value category. But it's hard. So there are certain characteristics I feel like you must have to be a value investor. And I've talked about some of these in the past. Patience was one of the big characteristics. But on this episode, I want to talk about guts. (laughs) I know that sounds strange. But why guts? Because value investors buy when everyone else is running away. That's really one of the key hallmarks. They buy when no one else is talking about that stock. They buy when a company is undervalued, but the fundamentals are still strong, but the street, for whatever reason, is overlooking it. They buy when it's really scary. And they buy when everyone else thinks they're crazy for buying. So I know many of you are seeing yourselves in this now. Your gut will tell you if it's a value stock because it'll be really, really hard to buy it. And then you're going to have to really stick by your decision. So I feel like guts is a huge characteristic of value investing. So let's look at some examples. So do you have guts to buy Micron right now? Are you being brave to buy that stock? Now, Micron, ticker MU, I've talked about it many times on the show, um, most recently as a value trap. And I'm afraid to say it still is one. And I'm not meaning to pick on Micron, but investors and traders have kind of like a cult around it right now, the cult of Micron, <laughs> I like to call it. Um, it's like a devotion to it. That's why I'm calling it a cult. And I, I'm getting like all these attacks on Twitter now whenever I tweet out anything about Micron being a value trap. And I, I get these messages like, you know, oh, Tracy, you don't know what you're talking about. I just had one where where the gentleman was like, oh, I've owned semiconductors for 40 years. I know what's going going on. And this is just a tremendous buying opportunity and blah, 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 and goes on um, to attack me for, you know, ever calling Micron anything other than a great stock. So some of these, um, that kind of devotion and belief in the stock is not really a trait of a value stock, actually. Um, You're not, you shouldn't, um, usually with a value stock, People are obviously running away, but they think, again, you're crazy for buying it. They're not trying to convince you to buy it when it's like a true value stock. So let's take a look at Micron now. Shares are down 37% in the last six months. We know it's pulled back. It has a forward P that's still super cheap of 4.6, and that's what everybody's pointing out to me all the time. Like, look how cheap it is. They're doing that huge share buyback that I think is like 25% of the float. 
And so that's another reason why everybody says like, this is fantastic, but it is a Zach's rank five now, a strong sell. And that is because of its earnings estimates. So the rank is about earnings estimates. Go and look and see what they're doing. So for full year fiscal 2019, which is what they're in right now, the Zach's consensus has dropped down from 10.32, so $10.32, down to 7.87. So that's a pretty big slide. They only they made 1195 last year, the boom year, record year. And so to go down to 787 that's a decline of 34% in earnings. Now you might say like, "Oh, well this is just a momentary thing. Yes, some has slowed down, but it's going to rebound." And obviously it will eventually rebound. But this kind of semiconductor cycle usually happens and lasts longer than a quarter or two, and you can really see that in the fiscal 2020 earnings estimates. Now, this is looking forward because their fiscal year starts in the middle of the year. So the Zach's consensus was at 937, and it's down to 690 now. So that's below what fiscal 2019 is. So we have those declining earnings continuing into the second year, down just another 12% in 2020, but down nevertheless. So yes, this is a value trap right now and it appears cheap, but those estimates are on the decline. Again, I'm not saying they're going to decline for forever, but um, that's the story right now. But Micron remains one of the most popular tickers on the stock market. If you go to Stock Twits, they always have the, those trending tickers up at the top. Micron is inevitably one of them, along with many of the other semiconductors like NVIDIA. So The street isn't really running away. It's not, despite the cheapness in these shares, it's not calling me crazy about shunning Micron. They're not saying, Tracy, you're a genius. Of course, you should shun it. No, they're telling me to buy it. So my gut right there, um, there doesn't take much guts, actually, to get into Micron here. And that's why I don't really like it as a value stock right here. Um, so like I said, I've actually had people trying to like guilt me into buying it on Twitter and calling me uh, a loser basically for not being in it. That's the guilting aspect of it. But conversely, let's talk about another value, uh, tech stock, Apple ticker, a, 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 P L. Why did I have the wrong ticker on that? Oh my gosh. I wrote down the wrong thing. Um, a, a, P L and it, does this one take guts to buy right now? So shares are down 20% in the last six months. It does, uh, it it is a value. It's trading with a forward PE of 12.9. So it's under the 15. It's not yet under 10, but it's, you know, fairly cheap right here. It hasn't reported earnings yet, reports on January 29th, but we've already had the warning. So those estimates were, you know, pulled back a bit. The, um, now looking at the estimates, Full year fiscal 2019, only expected to see earnings growth of 1.9%, so slight earnings growth there. And then fiscal 2020, rebounding a bit up 12%. So not so much of the value trap characteristics here, at least not yet, in this stock. But Apple has lost its glow. Like Apple used to have that cult-like following for sure. And it's kind of, I almost want to say hated. I can't believe I'm saying this. Like, has the cult of Apple died? I should write an, I should do a podcast on that. Has the cult of Apple died? I don't know. But I used to be used to say things like Apple was doomed <laughs> a couple of years ago. Um, this is before their services, I want to add. But before they had that, I felt like the iPhone is going to eventually die out and they didn't really have anything else. And without Steve Jobs, there was no visionary there. There's no one to drive the next product, nothing against management currently in place, but Steve was Apple. So I used to argue that Apple was doomed and I would get all these attacks on like stock twits and Twitter about it, calling me crazy, you you know, that I didn't know what I was talking about. But now when I say it, like nobody says anything. Like it's gone, it's gone away. I'm not torn to shreds. There's even people who are like liking my posts now. They're like agreeing with me. So it doesn't, you know, Micron, it didn't take any guts to buy that one because everybody loves it and it's got the cult. Apple, 
it, like Jim Cramer is like tweeting out every day, like trying to defend it and saying that there's still a lot of things going on there with the iWatch and their move probably into healthcare and all of that. And nobody's buying it. So I do feel like this one is screaming more like this is a value. People are running away. Um, Wall Street doesn't really like it. They they did the warning for the first time in almost 20 years. So this this has those characteristics. So we should be taking notice as a value investor. So my advice is to look for stocks that you have to have the guts to buy. There's no screen for this. I know it's kind of amorphous out there. So in addition to the screen, and you should still be screening for value fundamentals, you should still be researching all of that. But look for these stocks where it takes some guts. Now, I'm not saying you should run out and buy like the PG and E's of the world. That that would take guts right now because they're declaring bankruptcy and everybody's going to get wiped out. So, no, I'm not saying to buy those, you know, types of stocks or like the troubled retailers that you don't know for sure if they're going to survive. We know who those companies are. I've talked about some of these in the past, and I didn't think that they were, you know, where value investors should be going. But Apple is neither of those things, not even close. So you should have it on your list. And I have a couple other stocks that it might take some guts to buy right now that maybe you want to keep on your list too. Um, and just kind of watch and see what they do. So what about the Bank of Ozarks? I always call it that. It's really called Bank OZK now. Sorry, Bank OZK. I'm getting used to the rebranding. They rebranded their name so that we wouldn't have Ozarks in there. Um, I think they probably felt like that was a little outdated because they're not only the Bank of the Ozarks. They have um, investments and they've given out loans for buildings in Miami, New York, Chicago, to name just three. So Bank OZK is their new name. The ticker is OZK. And the street is completely run away from this regional bank here. It used to be a superstar as it seemed like it could do no wrong, that it was a quick grower. It was giving out loans in the... Um, real estate arena that were a little risky, but they seemed to have it under control. They hadn't taken any write downs in years until last year. <laughs> and suddenly they came out, they surprised the street with, whoops, we've had a couple write downs suddenly. And this was the first time in, you know, well over a decade of any kind of write down. They had a special conference call about it. They released this like dot point chart thing that showed where all their loans were, ones that are at risk or, um, you know, where those, those ones that did go bad were in the chain over the last years. So you could see, um, you know, what went wrong with that. They answered questions, but shares still got hammered. Shares have fallen 50% in the last six months, but they've rebounded off that 50% low. So they rebounded 25% off that December low. Um, and they recently had an earnings report that did not unveil any more uh, write downs. So there wasn't not a second surprise. And so they've seen a little bit of a rebound, but shares are still really cheap, still with a PE of 9.5. The peg is 0.8. So if you're looking around for a bank, a lot of the banks have been beaten down, but everybody's fleeing this one. Um, they feel like there's more risk than with some of the other regional banks. And even with the rebound, shares are still cheap. So Bank OZK, it's going to take some guts to get into that one. What about Weight Watchers? We haven't talked about this one in a long time, but I've been watching it. Ticker is WTW. This is the Oprah Winfrey weight loss or now wellness company. They're they're rebranding themselves just like Bank OZK, but they're going to be called WW now just to emphasize, get rid of the weight part and to emphasize the wellness, which is a big category now. That is uh, growing. People are trying to eat healthier, not necessarily, you know, quote unquote, going on a diet. They want to be shown how to eat healthier. Weight Watchers would fit in with all of that. And um, this was obviously the darling. It soared over the last couple of years, so much so that Oprah, who took a big stake in the company and became its spokesperson again, um, 
started to sell off her shares to fund her foundation. And now the shares have really taking, taken a beating here. So um, over the last six months, they're down 65%. And pretty much the street hates the stock now and it's running away. Now, the PE is really cheap. It got uh, as expensive, I want to say, as 17 or 18 times at its peak. So it wasn't like nosebleed level by any means, but PE down now to 9.7. So it is under the 10 peg of just 0.3. So it's got a growth component too. So that's pretty attractive. Um, Estimates have been kind of holding. They're expecting earnings growth of 23%. In the next year, um, some estimates have been cut for 2019, so they're not expecting quite as strong a growth anymore as they were, which is why some of the hatred towards the stock has occurred. But it's not a value trap by any means. We're not seeing a decline in earnings. Still expected to rise, like I said, 23%. So this is another one. It might take some guts here because so much of the momentum has gone the other way. And all the believers have now rushed out of the shares. Now, not too long ago, the CEO did like kind of a confidence buy in the shares, but that still did nothing to stem the tide of the sell-off. They don't report until the end of February. And I'm wondering if some more insiders will be buying around that time. We used to have some right after Oprah got in there um, who were buying some directors and such on the way up because they saw the good changes that were going on there. Now, will they see a bargain here? I don't know, but I'm going to be watching it to see if we get some more insiders buying here, because this could be an interesting story. Now, some other areas where you could see the uh, type of stocks where you have to have guts are, of course, the energies. Um, That's still really hated. It's been hated for three years. Nobody wants to go in there. On the recent downturn, once again, I saw like, oh, these companies are going under and they're not, (laughs) they're not even close to going under. So that's another sign that the street hates them and everybody's running away when they say, you know, they're doomed, they're going under. Uh, We still see in retail too, a lot of the old negativity is back. It kind of subsided for about a year. I didn't see as much of Amazon as taking over the world. Uh, things going on in the last year, but now some of that is back again, especially with the struggles with like Macy's, Kohl's, some of the department stores a little struggling, um, some struggles at the mall. It's all like, oh, online ordering is is going to dominate. Well, those companies all have online ordering now too. So that's not really the story um, about retail, but you can find some of the um, real uh, it takes guts types of stocks in the retailers. And again, I'm not talking about the ones that are really, really struggling like the JCPenney's. No, I'm talking about ones like Fossil. What about Fossil? F-O-S-L is the ticker there. This one um, was uh, just left for dead. The stock had been at like multi-year lows. It was declining, declining because who's buying a watch, right? The millennials don't want that. And sales were down on their watch line, they did introduce the, um, you know, the iWatch type of uh, product. They had many of those, the wearables, and those were doing pretty well. And then finally, they had a couple of quarters that showed things weren't as bad as what the street were saying. And the stock really came up off those lows. But now I was looking at it again, Um, the shares have really reversed course over the last six months. So they're down 38% in the last six months. At its worst, it was down about 50%. So a lot of these were down around 50 in December and then got the bounce off of that because the selling was overdone. Um, So this did get the bounce. So they're down only only 38% now in the last six months. Um, Over the last year, the shares have rallied. If you look at the longer chart over the year, that was that rally I was talking about. But now off those highs, it's it's cut that almost in half again. Over the last five years, if you're a long-term shareholder, it's down 85% still. But we don't care because we're not a long-term shareholder. (laughs) We're getting in here now. And um, just looking around, they made only five cents in 2017. So that you could see why they're down 85% over the last five years. The earnings just went down, 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 down. And now this year, 2018, or for last year, they made, well, they're expected to make 103. So you can see the really dramatic turnaround there. 
2019, still looking pretty good, $1.54, if these hold. So that's up 49% from 2018, the earnings. So earnings finally in the better trajectory, which is what you kind of see with value stocks. You see everybody abandon it. The, the company, if it's uh, well run, gets its act together, figures it out, and it starts that turnaround. So we are starting to see this here and still cheap, PE with of just 11.7 here. So under 12 for the PE, that's pretty cheap. And if these shares continue to see the downward momentum, more people will be fleeing it. There is more probably fear here. Those who made their early or their easy money off that rebound are getting out now. So um, this is definitely one to watch. No dividend for your troubles with this one, though. So you're just going to have to be um, holding. I'm watching this to see if I can get it a little cheaper. It doesn't report till mid-February, so we won't really find out what is happening there till mid-February unless they pre-announce. So these are five stocks that all have value characteristics. Um, I would say four out of five of them you would need some guts to buy right now because there's no cult around those five, those four at the moment. Nobody is um, shaming me into buying them at the moment. The fifth one, Micron, I am getting some shame. So I feel like there's not a lot of guts there. Even though it's cheap, it does have value trap characteristics and um, people still believe. So it's not it's not gotten cheap enough. The pain hasn't gotten severe enough there for the real value play. So it's not just one factor in value investing. Remember that. It's not just the sphere factor. You still have to have the solid fundamentals. You need the cheapness, obviously. And you have to have the patience. You have to have the guts to get in and you have to have the patience to believe in the story because it's not going to turn around right away. It's going to take time. So um, look for those key characteristics Take a long look at these beaten down stocks because you might find some hidden gems. Some will be value traps. Some will just not have good fundamentals. Like I've said, some of those retailers in particular don't have the good fundamentals, but some do. That's the that's the fun of value investing is that you can find some of these stocks that have gone out of favor that still have really great fundamentals. Um, like even Apple. Yes, I'm, I'm endorsing Apple now. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's got that great cash generation. The service side of their business is generating a ton of money. And that's, that's pretty steady income right there. So um, if you get it cheap enough, you're willing to dive in because you can get some deals here. So these are just a couple things to keep in mind. And as I always say, every week, there are value stocks out there because I found some of these like really great value stocks right now. And it wasn't that hard for me to find these. So let's recap those tickers. So we had Micron, MU, Apple, AAPL is a ticker there. Bank OZK is OZK. Weight Watchers or WW as they're now called, WTW. I'm waiting for them to change the ticker. I'm not sure if anyone else is WW, but I'm kind of annoyed that they're still WTW. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but Weight Watchers... They should look into that. And then Fossil, F-O-S-L, is one on the retail side to keep in mind. So remember, I'm doing one of these Value Investor podcasts every week unless you know something interrupts it, there's a holiday, I'm on vacation, something like that. So be sure to check out all of our old episodes. I know some of you, um, for some reason, are not subscribing because you you tweet at me and ask me when when there'll be another episode. Can't I do more episodes? I'm like, what do you mean more episodes? I'm doing one a week. Isn't that good enough? Um, and then they're surprised to find that there's this whole backlog. There's a whole catalog now of the Value Investor podcasts. Many of them are worth looking into, especially a lot of those ones about Warren Buffett, what he's doing with his investing portfolio, some secrets you can get from him. Those are always good for us value investors. If you're feeling kind of down that you're not a growth investor, go listen to some of those Warren Buffett value investor podcasts because you might get inspired off of those. I know I do whenever I do one. I will be doing another Warren Buffett podcast coming up after we get those 13 Fs that are filed in. Those are um, where 
Berkshire, uh, Berkshire Hathaway has invested in the last quarter. I'm very curious to see if he hasn't doubled down and added quite considerably to his banking stocks. Uh, but we, we don't know yet, but we're about to find out. So I will do an episode either here on The Value Investor or eh, maybe on the Market Edge podcast. So that's another reason why you should be subscribing to both of them. You can get both of them on SoundCloud and on Apple Podcasts under the Zach's Market Edge. But you can also get us as a standalone if all you care about is the value. And you can get the standalone on Apple Podcasts as well and on Spotify. So I know many of you are over on Spotify. I'm glad you found us there. But be sure to get us somewhere so that you don't miss a single episode. Have it sent directly to you when it launches every week and then you won't miss any. So I will be back again, as I said, next week with some more value stocks. I'll see you then. 